ऑनरेबल डॉक्टर अमनदीप कौर प्रिंसिपल जी एच जी हर प्रकाश कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन फॉर वोमेन सिद्धमापुर लुधियाना ऑनरेबल रिसोर्स पर्सन एस राजेंद्रन एच ओ डी इकोनॉमिक्स गांधी ग्राम रूरल इंस्टीट्यूट भीम टू वी यूनिवर्सिटी गांधी ग्राम तमिलनाडु गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर प्रोफेसर जे पी पटोरी फॉर्मर एच ओ डी सोशोलॉजी एंड सोशल वर्क एंड डीन स्कूल ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी एंड सोशल साइंसिस एच एन वी गढ़वाल यूनिवर्सिटी श्रीनगर उत्तराखंड ऑनरेबल प्रोफेसर सरोज चोलके रिटायर्ड प्रिंसिपल चर्च एंड कॉलेज कर्नाटका नैक असैसर आर रिस्पेक्टेड मैनेजमेंट मैंबर सरदार प्रीतम सिंह जौहल जी हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट एंड प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम वेरियस यूनिवर्सिटीज प्रिंसिपल फ्रॉम आर मेन्टी इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड अदर कॉलेज ऑफ पंजाब वेयर पार्टिसिपेंट्स हू ज्वाइन अस थ्रू जूम प्लेटफॉर्म एंड यूट्यूब लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग इका कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर सीमा चोपड़ा जी and my dear peeps a very good morning to all of you i would like to take this opportunity to extend my pleasant and heartfelt welcome to all of you on the behalf of management principal internal quality assurance cell and the whole sidma family on the 6th day of this online national workshop on the theme nac accreditation process and parameters organized by phg harprakash college of education for women sidma kur ludhiana from 12 september to 19 september the galaxy of intellectuals your excellency invited guests and my dear colleagues today we will focus on the criteria 4 that is student sport progress student sport and progression criteria 5 sorry uh, we feel honored to have with professor as rajendran nak assessor to give insight and enlighten us about each and every aspect of this criteria <laughs> now to proceed further i now request our patron principal dr amandeep kaur to welcome our honorable resource person for six day of this online national workshop to welcome us uh, to welcome our uh, resource person of the day professor s rajendran nak assessor ma'am please very good morning to all i'm delighted to welcome you all in this national workshop on the theme nac accreditation process and parameters it's my privilege to extend gracious welcome to our most honorable and esteemed resource person Mam, not audible. Not audible. Professor S. Rajendran is head of department of economics, Gandhi Gram Rural Institute, Puri Deen University, Tamil Nadu. It's my pleasure to extend superb welcome to our guest, treasured guest, Professor J. P. Pujari. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. Ma'am, please Ma unmute. Ma'am, speak a bit loudly. Ma'am, please unmute. 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 Ma'am, Thank you very much, ma'am. To proceed further, ma I now request Dr. Sarvajit Kaur, Assistant Dr. Professor, G H G Har Prakash College of Education for Women, Sidma Kurudhana, to briefing us about the criteria five, that is, students support and progression, that we are going to explore today. Dr. Sarvajit Kaur, ma'am, please. Dr. Oh, 
very good morning and warm welcome to our esteemed dignitaries and most valued audience connected with us on 6th day of national workshop on the theme NAC accreditation process and parameters under Pramash scheme of UGC. Today's session is focused on criteria 5, student support and progression. And we have with us our worthy resource person, Professor S. Rajindran, who will acquaint us with all the parameters of this criteria. The highlights of this criteria are the efforts of an institution to provide necessary assistance to students to enable them to acquire meaningful experiences for learning at the campus and to facilitate their holistic development and progression. It also look into students' performance and alumni profiles and the progression of students to higher education and gainful employment. Distribution of weightages across this key indicator are for universities 100, autonomous colleges 100, and affiliated and constituted colleges, its weightage is 130. The focus of criteria five is captured in four key and indicators, student support, student progression, student participation and activities, and fourth one is alumni engagement. As we know that students come to higher education from different backgrounds. Their needs differ significantly. It's the responsibility of institutions to cater their special needs and contribute in making their stay in the institution more enriching. Along with these measures, institutions must bring quality changes in teaching learning process as per the trend of progression of students. It's the fact that large number of students with degrees do not get job or are found unfit for the job for which they have to prescribe uh, qualification. To help these students in improving their performance, institutions must identify the reasons of their poor performance and provide remedial measures. So the institution's concern for students' progression to higher studies or for employment is pertinent issue of this criteria. Institutions must make best use of their resources for developing various skills and competencies and thereby foster holistic development of students as well as for staff. The institution must promote inclusive practices for social justice and better stakeholder relationships, encouraging students' participation in activities and providing facilities for developing various skills and competencies and foster holistic development is a basic requirement of this indicator. Active Alumni Association plays a significant role in higher education institutions. Thus, it is important to have an active alumni association for the benefit of students and teachers. We are having an expert of this field, Professor S. Rajendran, the treasure house of knowledge as a resource person of today's criteria. I welcome you, sir, to share your enriching experiences with us. Now I request Dr. Ajay for further proceeding. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Sarvit Kaur, for briefing us about today's topic for the discussion. To proceed further, now I request Madam Manpreet Kaur, Assistant Professor, GHG Harpakas College of Education, of Women Shidma Kurludhana, to introduce our honorable source person, Professor S. Rajendran, NAC assessor with our participants. Madam, please. A very good morning to all and welcome on the sixth day of national workshop. I could see that many eminent personalities are attending the workshop right now. I take pride in introducing the pole star in the galaxy of well-read elite and support pillars of our educational fraternity. His name is Professor S. Rajendran, HOD Economics, Gandhigram Rural Institute, Himtubi University, Tamil Nadu. He is having 24 years of teaching experience and his specialization in development studies. Along with it, he has been holding additional responsibilities like being a member of Vice Chancellor Search Committee in Algappa University, 
member of vice chancellor convener committee director of curriculum development syndicate member and senate member of ar university he guided and awarded many students in mphil and phd he published a couple of resourceful books and he's decorated with number of awards and honors professor rajendran has been continuously adding up to the research activities and has 24 years of vast teaching experience he has undertaken many research projects funded by ugc and one of them is economic and employment generation of organic and conventional farming in tamil nadu he contributed to many seminar conferences and workshop apart from india but he has been to many other countries for resourceful talks in national and international level conferences i again welcome you sir now i would like to hand over the platform to dr ajay to take this webinar to the next level sir please thank you very much ma'am for such a nice and elaborate introduction about our honorable resource person professor s rajendran nak assessor to proceed further now i request honorable resource person professor s rajendran hod economics gandhi gram rural institute deemed to be university gandhi gram tamil nadu to share his experiences thoughts and give us insight about each and every aspect of criteria 5 that is students support and progression professor s rajendran sir please hey everybody very pleasant morning one and all gathered before the online mode and at the outset let me congratulate the coordinator of the program dr ajay kumar pathania for having taken all pains and yesterday night also he disturbed me and told me that i should be before the screen by 10 o'clock sharp i am before you sir and uh, i would like to express my sincere thanks and congratulations to the college management council members honorable principal esteemed faculty members respected iqac members of this wonderful ghg har prakash college of education for women ludhiana my dear active participants and the senior teachers who are sitting before this uh, guest of honor professor pachori from garhwal university uk uttarakhand dr suresh cholke retired principal from vijayapura northern karnataka who has been a motivating source for me ever since we met in odisha on nac assessment i once again thank you all and also uh, welcome you for this session i could see on the other day when dr suresh cholke was sitting before the screen there were 91 participants today it came down to 51 participants now perhaps they may add but why i making this reference in economics we say diminishing marginal utility and i hope the a uh, participants will join in due course and we look forward to have them before the screen they are pretty possible that now the task given to me is to speak about the student support and the progression before i go over to the uh, actual presentation of student support and the progression many of us may be having strong apprehension about the nac assessment itself we may have the impression that nac is an added body and therefore nac will be very strict in each and every aspect of assessment and observation therefore a kind of fear psycho will emerge not only from the iqac members but also from all stakeholders including students non teaching staff and uh, other members in the uh, college counts college i think my perception i started my teaching career from the university of mysore where professor gnanam the founder director of nac came as the chairman of assessment nac research and a very senior professor professor jagaraj and dr tangamuthu came there 
and it was not like that it was very casual i'm talking about the very beginning i'm talking about the early 90s and uh, since then we have crossed almost uh, two and a half decades i was active member in iqsc in the periyar university salem and also here in gandhigram rural university and we have gone to third cycle of accreditation we never felt any inconvenience to subject ourselves for accreditation therefore please young friends who are sitting here let us not have the impression that the nac is coming to harass us or to excuse us or to test our ability it is not like that then what for nac there are half a dozen reasons why we have to subject ourselves for assessment and accreditation let me list out they are listed out in the screen you yourself can see with your eyes first and foremost reason for our accreditation is to know about our strength weakness opportunities and the challenges of each and every higher educational institutions through the review process i call them as self introspection the second reason is to identify internal areas of planning and resource allocation in the institution campus the third reason for assessment is to seek financial support from various funding agencies not only within india but also elsewhere because across the globe most of the uh, educational institutions or higher educational institutions including colleges and universities and also research institutes like iisc isc bangalore cds trivandrum and so on and so forth they all look forward for financial resources through collaborative research not only with the regional institutes but also national institutes and foreign agencies such agencies look for whether your agency has been your institution has been accredited and if it is so what is the score etc if your score is higher than naturally there will be more for for the research and the fourth point is to get a new sense of direction and identity of your higher educational institution to take it forward and the penultimate objective of assessment is to provide a reliable information authentic information of your higher educational institution to each and every stakeholders like students society in and around your neighborhood or what i call and also recruiting agencies i underline the word recruiting agency because nowadays the government agencies are unable to provide a job for all the graduates who are coming out whether it is technical medical or arts and science or education therefore there are a recruiting agencies which look for which look for graduates from leading and the high the uh, reputed institutes therefore we go in for assessment process and uh, finally to academically collaborate exchange your ideas with the inter and, and the intra institutional this is is illustrated in being for nac accreditation and therefore there are accrediting agencies like nac which engage in uh, accreditation of higher educational institutions and uh, having understood the objectives of assessment and accreditation let us venture into understand what are the eligibility criteria going for assessment remember a higher educational institution with a record of at least two batches of students graduated or it has been in existence for 6 years whichever is earlier such institutions are eligible to go for applying for assessment and accreditation with nac <coughs> all universities like ours and it's like uh, uh, jawaharlal nehru university Uh, banaras hindi university and also iisc all institutions which are of national importance and uh, all universities in india are eligible for uh, accreditation in addition to these national institutions the autonomous colleges 
constituent colleges affiliated colleges which are affiliated to universities uh, and recognized by the ugc as an affiliated university are all eligible for accreditation and the accredited colleges and universities can apply again for reassessment or sub for subsequent cycle like cycle 2 cycle 3 and cycle 4 and the other type of institutions higher educational institutions at the discretion of nac and finally the mandatory participation of all these institutions should have enrolled with the all india survey on higher education portal you are submitting your ssr these are the eligibility criteria for any higher educational institutions whether college university or national level important institutions which you go in for assessment and accreditation please remember these points and now having set these the objectives for accreditation and also the uh, eligibility criteria for accreditation let me move on to the job given to me to discuss about the criterion five the title as madam was telling student support and progression which has 140 marks for ug college and 130 marks 30 points for pg colleges in nutshell in summary the primary objective of this criteria primary focus of this criteria is the efforts of higher educational institution to provide necessary assistance necessary directions to the important stakeholder that is the students to enable them to acquire and equip meaningful experiences for their learning and future career development to bring out good human resources and the other uh, uh, objective other point is to facilitate the students holistic development and the progression with more of confidence you can produce graduates but if they do not have self confidence in their career then it will become a fertile exercise therefore the higher educational institutions need to facilitate their holistic development and the progression with the uh, conf with the confidence to the stakeholders the larger stakeholders the students and also it looks into the criterion five looks into student performance from the perspective of students we can uh, assess the performance in terms of past percentage medal awarded etc university rank holders etc and beyond that we also need to have in the area of extracurricular extra moral how far the students have acquired their performance their skill etc need to be assessed and the progression of students to higher education and the gainful employment the students once they are graduated automatically they go for higher education at the pg level or mphil and of course mphil from this i this academic year onwards we are going to scrap it a pg or a phd or post doctoral level and ultimately all these should lead to gainful employment for the students community the uh, criterion also emphasizes encompasses the achievements the accomplishments made by the stakeholders in extracurricular activities i have the points we will discuss it later what are the extracurricular activities like and uh, the other component which is very important is the alumni profiles whether the alumni association is formally registered with the register of societies societies office and the periodical meetings convened minutes recorded in the registration book actions initiated and taken over the agenda brought forth and the impact delivered impact achieved impact attained from the actions initiated by the professional body association each of the institutions particularly by focusing on student community 
not just merely coming and conducting and uh, examining the meetings and the things like but also they should focus on the welfare of the the juniors the remaining students in the campus it's providing suggestions for higher education for each higher education and also to gain to get employment in uh, reputed institutions and in some of the cases could be सर आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही डॉक्टर राजेंद्रन सर आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही सर यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑटोनॉमस कॉलेजेस यूनिवर्सिटीज इंक्लूड इवन द इंस्टीट्यूट्स ऑफ नेशनल इंपॉर्टेंस लाइक आईआईटीज आईएएससी एटसेट्रा ऑटोनॉमस कॉलेजेस व्हिच आर मोर इन नंबर पर्टिकुलरली इन साउथ इंडिया एज कंपेयर टू नॉर्थ इंडिया एंड सेंट्रल इंडिया एंड अफिलिएटेड कॉलेजेस व्हिच आर क्लासिफाइड टू अंडर ग्रेजुएट एज वेल एज पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट because some of the aspects differ between these two types of institutions and there are seven criteria common for all these four types of institutions uh, higher educational institutions and the key indicators vary you can see yourself for universities and uh, autonomous colleges there are 34 key indicators and for affiliated college colleges the key indicators vary for ug they are only 31 for pg it is 32 and uh, next to that we have qualitative matrices which are uh, assessed which are observed by the peer team members during the uh, peer team visit in the college uh, for universities we have 36 uh, key indicators and for autonomous colleges we have 35 uh, similarly for affiliated colleges ug we have 35 and for pg we have 36 and the quantitative matrices include for universities 79 for autonomous colleges 72 for ug colleges affiliated colleges they are 58 for pg the numbers are 60 total we have 115 for universities and institutes of national importance including quantitative and qualitative matrices and for autonomous colleges they come to 107 and for ug such items come to 93 and for pg colleges they are accounted to 96 now having understood the distribution of key indicators and the matrix across various or dimensions including key indicators qualitative matrix and the quantitative matrix let me move on to understand the distribution of scores across <coughs> various criteria we have seven criteria including our student support again as i commented the uh, scores are varying between these two but the summary we summary score uh, stands at 1000 for each institution each type of institutions and for curricular aspects the criterion one we have equal number of scores 150 for universities and national institutes for autonomous colleges 150 and also for affiliated constituent colleges 150 teaching learning and evaluation we got 200 for universities 300 for autonomous colleges and 350 for uh, constituent and uh, affiliated colleges friends please remember and uh, sometimes because the nac changes the score every now and then at least once in 6 months and therefore there is a possibility for variation and therefore this is a kind of notional point i am giving uh, and sometimes they are subject to change now and then and then the third criteria uh, research innovation and extension we have 250 points under research because uh, we expect that the universities and national institutes national importance institutes are focusing more on innovative research and uh, more of extension and therefore the score is more here and for autonomous colleges it is 150 for affiliated colleges and constituent colleges the score is 120 for <clears throat> infrastructure and learning resources that is criteria 4 we have 100 scores each for all three types of institutions and the uh, uh, student support and progression which i am going to dwell upon next to this 
uh, for universities and the college autonomous colleges we got at each and for affiliated con affiliated or constituent colleges where for ug it is 140 and for pg it is 130 and the penultimate criteria that is criteria 6 governance and leadership and management which forms an important component in any higher educational institution because we look for the strategic planning and then the team spirit etc under governance we have 100 marks 100 scores each for all three types of institutions and the last point which is also again important is which is reflecting about your institutional values and the best practices 100 points 100 scores each on all three types of institutions and having set the uh, scores and the distribution of key indicators in two tables let me move on to the uh, dimension of student support and the progression for ug uh, it is 140 and for pg it is 130 we have on the left hand side the key indicators 5.1 student support which has 50 <coughs> points 5.2 student progression where for P ug 100, 100 that very only 30 for pg 45 less than less 5 and for 5.3 student participation and activities we have 50 points whereas for ug for pg colleges it is 45 <clears throat> and here in the alumni engagement we have 10 points and it put together it comes to 140 and for qualitative matrix we have 2 and the quantitative matrix we have 11 and under, <clears throat> under <clears throat> student support we have 5 dimensions which we will be looking to later in detail and uh, under 5.2 student progression we have three important dimensions again which we are going to see we are going to look into subsequently similarly student sub participation and activities we have two and for alumni engagement we have only one now the breakup for qualitative matrices two which has 15 scores and the quantitative matrix we have 11 which comes to 125 together <coughs> Now, the first component that is the student support, we have 50 points where let me uh, discuss uh, point by point so that you will be able to grasp and understand when you are preparing your SSR, this will be of more useful and crucial. Facilitating mechanisms like career guidance cell, placement cell, grievance redressal cell, and welfare measures to support the students. Friends, please keep in your mind, students are the main stakeholders of any higher educational institution, whether it is university or institution, institute or PG college or constituent college or UG college, the students are main stakeholders of any higher educational institution. Of late, earlier we were just give, degree giving degree providing, degree facilitating organizations. Now the situation has changed very drastically where we started attaching much importance for career guidance and placement. Now, without sufficient, without proper, without scientific, without active, a career guidance and a placement cell, no higher educational institution can sustain and survive if our uh, uh, in the long run. Therefore, the higher educational institutions shall have facilitating mechanisms like career guidance, placement cell, and also grievance redressal mechanism. And ultimately, these lead to support the students community at large. Then only you can have peaceful atmosphere and a congenial uh, campus where you can run the higher educational institution in a smooth manner. The second point I would like to emphasize under student support activity is the support should be specially designed inputs which are provided to the needy students with learning difficulties. What we mean here is the slow learners. What is the mechanism you have to address the difficulties, address the problems, address the issues of, address the demand and the requirements of slow learners? 
that is what we mean learning any difficulties the other point under the student support mechanism is the higher educational institution need to be facilitated facilitator in ideas like uh, encouragement of encouragement for seminars debates conferences participation in conferences attending training programs for advanced learners and earlier we had seen the slow learners or the students with learning difficulties similarly we should also have mechanism for advanced learners and such students should be specially focused on encouraging to attend seminars to debate to discuss to participate in debates conferences training programs not only at regional level not only at local level at colleges or institute or university level but also at the state level and the national level if possible at the international level there are i know there are some institutes in uh, there are some colleges in maharashtra there are some colleges in gujarat there are some colleges in our own state in tamil nadu they encourage students to participate on these academic programs academic programs including training programs not only within india but also elsewhere and therefore i suggest the student support should include all these for advanced learners so that they can take our institute our higher educational organization whether it is college or institute or uh, constituent college to newer heights newer strides and also you should have provision for bridge and value added courses in the relevant and useful and purposeful areas uh, uh, which the in higher educational institution can identify and inculcate among the students community and a higher educational institution has to have a well structured organized career guidance and a counseling in place counseling system in place please remember you all may be wondering what is this gandhi gram rural institute uh, uh, bracket we call them as deemed to be university please remember in india around the 50s around 1950s only 14 universities of national importance were started across the country only gandhi gram is surviving now we have unique uh, system of student teacher relationship here we have guru system guru class system where four or five students are allotted to each teacher to take care of their not only education but also personal issues if the girl students means there may be a number of issues and if the boys there are some issues which need to be taken into account and uh, the respective gurus respective uh, counselor will take care of intensively their difficulties and to find out the solutions so that the universities the higher educational institutions will be having a pleasant atmosphere among the student community therefore the counseling system whether it is financial matter whether it is personal matter whether it is gender issue whether it is student teacher uh, conflict or cooperation the guru should be responsible held responsible for taking care of this i insist across the country during mid 50s of previous century 14 institutions were started only gandhi gram is surviving still today we have the guru class system in gandhi gram campus which is located very close to madurai in tamil nadu and please remember friends the students should be benefited through uh, various supportive measures like earn while learn scholarships free ships fellowships and other uh, financial means should be identified by higher educational institutions i mean the higher educational institutions through its iqac or various uh, forums through including the management forum management council should see that such facilities such financial assistance are provided to students uh, while uh, they are in the campus for higher education uh, if you are doing like many uh, institutions they can bring laurels to laurels and accomplishments to your institution which will have more status more prestige more name in your locality at local level and also at national level and having said that the student support let me move on to the average percentage of students benefited by the financial assistance in the form of scholarships and the free ships provided by the government whether it is central government or state government during the last 5 years because the last 5 years referred to 
the institutions which go in for uh, assessment and uh, please friends remember when uh, since this is the uh, uh, paramarsha institution uh, the faculty members including patani may be knowing very well that the five years include the uh, the uh, even before the day of visit of the faculty members but uh, you should not uh, leave any uh, information any data which are pertaining to student support and progression whether it is financial or whether it is counseling etc because each and every even bit of information will be more useful for assessors to keep in mind to give philip to think of providing more scores therefore the last five years include the reference period of your assessment and which has 20 point and the data requirement include year wise information number of number of students by schemes and also the number of students benefited from such schemes please remember friends and respected teachers when you are giving the students you can classify like economically backward economically advanced socially backward socially advanced or forward or obc scst and the forward communities you can classify your own way and provide a detailed and comprehensive information under this on the average percent of the students benefited by scholarships and free seats when we talk about average students it has to be worked out with the total number of students in the respective group respective class like economic class or social class whichever you are taking into account i think i make it clear the next point is the average percentage of students uh, benefited by scholarships free seats etc provided by the institution the higher educational institution which is subjected to assessment and accreditation and also the development organizations or civil societies or non governmental organizations which are located in your neighborhood by years for last 5 years which has five mark we call them as quantitative matrix and the data required include for last 5 years which has the component of name of the scheme i mean the program with the contact information of the uh, organization whether it is development organization whether it is government state owned institution or philanthropic institution whichever uh, you have you can uh, include that and uh, i will come to a, a point where i can give a very interesting and emulating example here when i was working as professor and again in the department of economics in periyar university salem i could contact personally with the local entrepreneurs you know that salem is one of the industrially advanced uh, districts in tamil nadu where we could catch hold the uh, uh, philanthropists around five only in economics department we have five philanthropic uh, uh, fund where each year we give award to the university rank holders for pg students in our department i think one of the uh, convocation addresses the governor was amazed to see a student was receiving more than six awards for various subjects within economics and which boosts naturally the morale of the department and also the higher educational institution and therefore uh, not only just the uh, teaching community in the college and in the university or in the institution should confine only to teaching and research but also to look for uh, locating or identifying the uh, philanthropists in your area if it is uh, ludhiana ludhiana is a very industrial advanced place i know and you can catch hold the industrialist you can request them you can convince them to set up uh, uh, the endowment fund in the department or in the institution so that this will be a supportive uh, uh, aspect for the student fraternity and also in addition to the scheme and the contact information of the philanthropist you can provide the at uh, number of students benefited under each scheme or each uh, endowment fund etc and the contact information is required because in case if the nac wishes they can directly get in touch with them to ascertain whether it is uh, uh, active or passive things like that's all the 5.13 uh, the first point the student support is <clears throat> capacity building and skills enhancement initiatives taken by higher educational institutions including the following which has 10 points 10 scores friends i emphasized in one of the slides earlier uh, in uh, nowadays the traditional method of teaching and the traditional method of focus in higher educational institution has been uh, drastically changing and therefore 
the institution is expected to provide sound career counseling and also motivating the students for competing in the competitive examination and things like therefore uh, the the departments the faculty members in the iqac uh, the authorities in the higher educational institutions should see that the students are encouraged motivated and uh, uh, advised to participate in taking uh, competitive examinations and uh, career counseling information communication technology oriented soft skills remedial coaching language and communication skills and i think most of the uh, students they lack with the communication skill they are good at the subject they score good marks they do extremely well in the end of semester examinations but unfortunately they lack communication skill community skill when they are attending the interview in the career counseling and the placement meetings i could see a uh, number of students face utterly the difficulty of communicating in easy way therefore i uh, most of the institutions started focusing on communication communicate uh, the disability communication skill in addition to in addition to bridge courses therefore uh, i think uh, this this area should be focused in a very concrete manner and i think nac gives attention to this and therefore this include this is included in this component of 1551.3 1. under capacity building and skill enhancement and uh, bridge courses life skills include yoga physical fitness health and hygiene please remember when the entire world when the entire globe is subjected to covid 19 pandemic excuse me let me have some water now the <clears throat> uh, focus on health oriented aspect becomes important i think indian way of uh, keeping your body fit includes yoga which the present government is giving at most importance so that the students will be having physical fitness i think not only for necessary for students but also it is important for teachers the teachers who are in advanced age like us will be having a lot of pressure and lot of tension and therefore yoga will relieve and keep our selves fit to be in the classroom and in the department and therefore life skills including yoga physical fitness health and hygiene are important component in the capacity building and skill enhancement under 5.13 and uh, finally personal scout counseling i gave you a very classic example of gandhi gram experience and therefore the personal counseling forms a pivotal uh, 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 role in the uh, uh, molding of students fraternity students community in the higher educational institution campus so this includes the options like depending upon the options we award scores like seven or more of the above or b any six of the above or any five of the above and d any four of the above depending upon the uh, combinations of the op options we offer points to this point 5.13 on capacity building of the students and the career counseling now data requirement for this aspect includes and it depends upon the data template provided in the ssr name of the capacity building and the skills enhancement initiatives taken by the higher educational institutions please remember this should have record you need not you can you cannot just say that we have conducted three or four capacity building programs and wind up you need to have a register i think i have in the concluding sessions concluding part of the discussion where the aspects which you need to keep in your office as files or documents that are required for uh, showing or displaying during the nac peer team visit i have a couple of points that we will discuss at the end and therefore the capacity building initiative taken by higher educational institution and also skill enhancement skill enhancement should have record should have record with date wise and session wise all should be kept in the department and in the iqac year of implementation number of students enrolled number of students actively participated and number of students gainfully benefited from such a capacity building activities and name of the agencies engaged with contact details for capacity building and now let us move on to the next component 
four, where the average percentage of students uh, benefited by guidance for competitive examinations and the career counseling offered by the higher educational institution, whether it is college or university or institute, during the reference period of five years. And here we have two rows, one is the year and the number. And the data required for this component includes five years as per the again data template, not temple, it is wrongly typed data template. And uh, which includes the name of the scheme, number of students folk who have passed in the competitive examinations. They would have taken up various competitive examinations, including regional level, national level, etc. And uh, the number of students. Institute, National Institute for Doctoral Thesis. And uh, we never came across the uh, institution which has a special place for sexual harassment and ragging. In those days, it was not very common. But nowadays, this becomes an issue. And every quarter, every uh, beginning of the academic year, the UGC and AACT sends uh, information, even in, including NCTE, they send communication to the institution to take care of their students and free from ragging and also the sexual harassment. Therefore, this becomes an issue nowadays. And therefore, the NAC gives utmost importance for this aspect as well, which include the implementation of guidelines of statutory and regulatory bodies, whether you have such cells or not, which are in consonance with the guidelines of statutory and regulatory bodies. And the organization undertakes the higher educational mechanisms for online and offline students' grievances. And sometimes if you visit any college, you find very neatly painted boxes for students uh, uh, to place the uh, letters on grievances. But once you complete and then they will just remove the box and go away. But nowadays, to, to, to remove that hurdle, and they have online. You can also give the, uh, you can submit the uh, grievances through online, which is fairly safe and uh, reachable to the authorities, to the body, to the concerned cell. Therefore, now the uh, institutions shall have uh, online and offline facilities for addressing the students' grievances. And not only that, whether the uh, grievances were timely addressed, mechanisms which were delivered by the, uh, the statutory body or statutory cell. These four points are important in this context of sexual harassment and uh, ragging cases. And uh, uh, the options include A, all of the above, and B, three of the above, and C, two of the above, and D, one of the above. And sometimes some colleges may not be having any of these facilities, which we have to give zero mark for that. And the data requirement includes upload the grievance redressal policy document, what we stated earlier, the mechanism, uh, with reference to the prevention of sexual harassment committee and the anti ragging committee, and also the constitution of, constitution of various subcommittees for addressing the issues, minutes recorded in the meetings of the committee, such committee, and also number of cases raised, received and redressed subsequently. Not only that, we in our campus, in the Gandhi Gram, we go little beyond. After redressing, whether the uh, student has, uh, st student is feeling comfortable, and uh, we inquire with the parents and our the guardians with the students and then only we will uh, be happy with that and it will be seriously it is very comprehensively monitored by the authorities in our campus. So such a facility should be uh, left to the higher educational institution to take care of your har sexual harassment and uh, uh, what you call the ragging. And the 5.2 we are now we are moving on to student progression which has 30 points. 
the uh, institution is expected to have concern for student progression to higher studies and or to employment is a pertinent issue for assessment and accreditation i i made a reference in the beginning in those days the institutions were mere degree providing or facilitating to provide a degree uh, was a role was a responsibility of the higher educational institutions particularly the colleges but of late the situation has been very drastically changed because of the competitive world and the market oriented opening up of economy to the global market etc and now it becomes very strict very very comprehensive very sorry very complex and also difficult and hence it is expected that whether the particular institution is concerned is seriously taking care of the students progression to the higher studies of students and or in the arena of employment is an important issue nowadays therefore please remember whether your student whether your institution is focusing on students progression for higher studies and or employment is a paramount issue in the campus for attaining more score please remember this point and please remember sometimes there may be because of the formal intervention of the student formal intervention of the higher educational institution the students should have uh, obtained higher degrees or employment but please remember because of the initiatives taken by some individual teacher or individuals around the students neighborhood he would have employed whatever be the case but in case if there are some examples of higher merit you can include in your data you can claim that such a student who, who studied in your institution became a higher ladder in the employment arena therefore they are claiming there is no harm about it and also <coughs> the other point is the responsibility of higher education institution is to identify the reasons for poor attainment and the plan of action and the implementation of remedial measures please remember you cannot expect all higher educational institutions to have higher enrollment ratio for higher education higher uh, higher level of studies like from degree to pg or pg to mphil or phd or phd to pdf maybe due to locational institutional or the uh, other reasons such institution may not be possible but what the institution has taken initiative to rectify such difficulties that is the point the nac is expecting and it is also expecting how such initiatives were implemented in the form of remedial measures so please uh, all the iqsc members all the young faculty members who are sitting before the screen please remember this point and uh, in a way any institution which may not be possible to provide 100% employment or 100% progression to higher studies but what is the effective what is the effective and the institutional interventional mechanism which has been initiated from the college or university itself and how far it has uh, yielded fruit this need to be documented and recorded for assessment purpose <coughs> now the uh, second point is uh, sustainable good practices which effectively support the students uh, to facilitate optimal progression i have highlighted it it is in enough way the institutional provisions should facilitate vertical movement of students from one level to one level of education to the next higher level or towards gainful employment or both and uh, that is what i would always advise my students before you complete your uh, education you should have job beforehand therefore i encourage my students starting from the enrollment into ug level in our campus we have ug as well and uh, you write keep on writing competitive examinations we have different cells here in the campus like uh, scst counseling cell the general students uh, career counseling and also training cell and we periodically conduct the cells and uh, conduct the training programs and the students are employed in banking sector and other government uh, uh, jobs therefore the institutions shall have provisions to facilitate vertical movement of students from one level of education to next higher level or towards higher uh, and gainful employment or both higher education as well as gainful employment and the students qualifying for state national and or international level examinations 
or competition should be identified by higher educational institutions and also the the institution say take the responsibility to mold the students to successfully and effectively compete and qualify in these examinations now under the 5.21 we have the table and where we have average percentage of placement of outgoing students during the last few years we have 10 points we have year and number uh, data requirement for the uh, last 5 years as per the template given by the nac in ssr name of the employer with the contact details including phone number specific address etc because sometimes virtually they conduct and sometimes they will give training also to Uh, attend the students for uh, placement uh, therefore this will be of a document for uh, the uh, college in college or university and therefore you collect all details and uh, keep it in your safe custody and the number of students placed from placement cell in the uh, placement campus and sometimes your college may conduct placement campaigns or you may in association with the neighborhood colleges also you may conduct or if it is an affiliated college they may conduct in the uh, affiliated university in the campus so th there are three types of possibilities and uh, wherever you do wherever you did you document and uh, provide uh, as additional information to the point on average percentage of placement outgo of outgoing students during the last 5 years and here we too in the campus in our campus even from our own students our own departments we have difficulty in maintain the document particularly the students who are coming from northeastern states like assam meghalaya manipur tripura nagaland etc and also from neighboring state kerala we have lot of students from other states including karnataka maharashtra we have students now it is a difficult thing for us but what we do we follow snowballing method and through one correspondence we try to establish network and then get the information through online therefore any institution which are interested in going for assessment and accreditation should focus on this to gather maximum information and please keep this in your mind and the 5.2.2 which is quantitative matrix where we have average percentage of students progress into higher education during the last 5 years year wise and program wise you can give and the number of outgoing students progression to higher education data requirement as per given template this can also be given in the form of table and the number of students proceeding from which include undergraduate to postgraduate it could be within the college or neighboring colleges or elsewhere from pg to mphil and of course mphil we need not to give importance from this year onwards but however the institutions which are going for a submit ssr this year certainly may have mphil and they can include pg to mphil and pg to M phd and mphil to phd and finally phd to post doctoral research uh, I, from my experience except most of the south indian states and many colleges in north india do not have <coughs> even uh, phd and post doctoral may be difficult but here in south india particularly in tamil nadu we have number of autonomous colleges where each college is uh, in size of universities therefore uh, we have post doctoral pdf program as well even we have visiting scholars program in some of the colleges and uh, you can document and keep the file ready for the uh, students progress into higher education during the reference period of 5 years <clears throat> and as i insist you please don't leave any bit of information on any stage on any aspect pertain into student progression and the support because even a small information will be of great help to boost your point your score and then 5.2.3 average percentage of students qualifying in state national international level examinations during the last 5 years include jan plat gat gmat cat gre tofl civil services state government examinations which has 5 points qualifying age qualifying students 
year and the number and then appearing students year and the number and then you can work out the percentage of students who have uh, cleared from appearing students this is what i mean qualifying and appearing students and the data included data required for this aspect for the last five years which should be in consonance with the format given by the NAC and it can be from item wise like jam clad net etc which also includes the state government examinations others in case if there are any you can include in your template and friends now we move on to the third component of student support and progression the first two being uh, the student support and progression the third component is student participation and activities which has 50 marks now before we get on to the uh, uh, tables and uh, uh, security data let us briefly outline the focus of student participation and uh, activities in this juncture the higher educational institution is expected to promote inclusive practices for social justice and a better stakeholder relationship the higher educational institution is expected to promote inclusive practices for social justice for attaining social justice and to have better stakeholder relationship you if you are having always a conflicting relationship that this will affect the academic atmosphere therefore the participation activities should include uh, inclusive social justice and also the stakeholder relationship and the higher educational institution is expected to promote value based education for inculcating for igniting and for emulating the students on social responsibility and the good citizenry among the stakeholding student community we just need not to produce the students or we need not to help the students to get degrees but we have to inculcate ignite the students to have very best education in the uh, uh, in the stakeholding uh, group that is student community that is a, that is under the responsibility of the students uh, the sorry the higher educational institution while we deal while it deals about the students participation and activities the third component is the higher educational institution has the record infrastructure and promotes active participation of the students in social cultural and leisure activities friends i would like to uh, express my confess my bitter as well as excellent experiences green memories on various occasions to visit different states including madhya pradesh uttar pradesh and uh, uh, south indian states like karnataka etc uh, some of the institutions are really bad but try to show off in a good manner but there are some institutions which do have moderate facilities but failed to project it as moderate facility they tried to uh, show off here and there and they get trapped and there are good institutions which do have excellent infrastructure facilities but failed to promote the participation of students so these three set of institutions we could witness i think professor cholke and professor pachori might have also encountered such situations in their experiences but whatever be the case but the higher educational institution is required to have good infrastructure which ultimately promotes active participation of students in social cultural and leisure activities i remember i think even now we have in the first day in the last lesson, last session of the first day of our pt visit we have cultural activity friends i remember in one of the colleges which are fully uh, dominated by scheduled type communities in kerala scheduled type students they performed extremely well the in, in the cultural program and we were thoroughly thrilled and the chairman from north india was amazed to see such a spectacular uh, participation by the students from tribal dominated area in kerala therefore uh, only thing is students do have the skill only thing is the teaching fraternity the teachers the counselors the uh, institution shall motivate such students to display their 
ability in displaying social, cultural, and leisure activities. And also, the institution shall encourage the students' participation in activities which facilitate developing various skills and competencies and foster a holistic development in the campus. You need not expect that always most of the students would get or shall get the uh, uh, ranks, top 10 ranks from the university, etc. Students shall have holistic development in their mental activity, holistic development in their mental attitude, not just lopsided, not, like, not just a compartmentalized development. A student means he should be in a position to have acquired knowledge, skill, and also competency to face any eventuality in his career. That is the kind of development, the holistic development in the higher educational institution self foster to mold mentally students. Now we come to the uh, actual data quantitative matrix where the number of awards, medals for outstanding performance in sports, cultural activities at the university, state, national, international level awards. Friends, please keep here in your mind, award given for entire team should be treated as one unit, not individual awards. And this information for last five years, the reference period, which has 20 points. <coughs> Here we have year and the number of students who were awarded various medals and awards. Data requirement as usual for the past five, five years, as per the template given, which include university, national, uh, state level, national and international level. The aspects include <coughs> sports, culture, and again, the award for team should be treated as one unit. <coughs> one unit. Now let us move on to the uh, qualitative matrix of 5.32, where the institutions institution facilitates uh, students for representation and encouragement in engagement in various administrative, co-curricular and extracurricular, extracurricular activities, uh, presence of an active student council, students representation on various academic and administrative bodies, and the council is per established process and in terms of higher educational institutions. Friends, I think IQAC has students representation. Similarly, in some of the colleges, they have representation of students in the various administrative body of the college and also academic bodies of the college. We have planning forum, students planning forum, students discourse forum, students council for respective schools and things like which need to be taken into account while assessing in the form of qualitative matrix, which you do have 500 words. I remember on the other day, Professor Tolke in his, in his presentation was made a reference. 500 mean 500 words means 500 words, not 1,500 words. Now, so you should stick on to the maximum limit and please remember this point because of over enthusiasm and the number of students have uh, got more score, more awards, etc. You cannot go on elaborating in a large scale like writing economic essay for 20 marks. It should be precise, uh, concise, and uh, to the point. And then the 5.3.3 average number of student uh, sports and the cultural events competitions in which students of the institution participated during the last five years organized by your own institution or neighboring institution or your affiliated university which has 20 marks. And here the data required for five years as per the data template given and list the number of events or competitions held from your own institution or elsewhere and the outcome of the students. They might have got the runner or something, but which need to be uh, described here in the 5.3.3. Now I think uh, we came to the last uh, aspect again, again and again, I'm insisting, please remember the uh, information pertaining to student progression and the support should come from various sectors, various sites like sports, cultural department, 
then uh, what you call iqac etc but everything should be blended and provide pakka information authentic information with the appropriate data and also the accurate data not just peripheral information or just uh, the uh, oral information you should give accurate information with the evidence evidence based information is required and uh, uh, for heaven's sake we may be in some differences ideological differences and also the subjective differences like economics is superior uh, management is superior uh, geography is superior something like you should forget about all that while preparing the ssr and uh, also completing the process of assessment nac assessment you forget about all these differences you put all your heads as one and united you deliver all the required information and the comprehend which should be a which should be a, a useful and a purposeful one for the uh, 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 for getting higher score from the nac and to impress upon the peer team members now let us move on to the uh, last uh, uh, dimension of the student support and progression we have alumni engagement which has 10 points friends remember alumni engagement doesn't mean that you go to just uh, call a couple of alumni and uh, make some meetings having chai then uh, snacks etc and then disperse having chat with the, uh, uh, the, the authorities etc now alumni means the students who passed out from your institution maybe they may be employed as a teacher or even they may be in the council also college council also but they should be proactive in delivering good services to the institution please remember this point not passive alumni but active alumni <coughs> the association shall have registration pakka registration the uh, the association must be active and contributing to the betterment of institution student community in, in the form of infrastructure and also financial resources and more importantly in guiding and counseling the student folk in the area of employment i remember in one of the colleges in gujarat the alumni went to abroad they settled there one day he is in vietnam please remember he is having his office in uh, uh, hanoi the headquarters of vietnam he has marble industry there and the uh, students students from the college it is a government college actually and uh, uh, every year two or three students are actively taken and uh, given guidance by the uh, respective alumni members and they are sent to vietnam and they are gainfully employed there and uh, similarly uh, in kerala we found that they, you know that the kerala is relying on postcard money from especially south asian countries and uh, east or east asian countries uh, arab countries and uh, most of the uh, 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 migrants from kerala they give counseling to the students in malapuram district calicut district and also in uh, kollam district and they make organized system to help the students left in the uh, colleges and uh, gainfully apply their uh, self employed as most of the cases they go in the health care sector therefore alumni association doesn't mean that they just come and uh, attend meeting convene meeting and then forget it therefore i suggest they give even counseling to appear for net ugc net ugc set examinations there are successful cases as my, uh, my team experience says every engagement should have the following dimensions the first one is alumni are a strong support to the institution and to facilitate the stakeholders including students and the teachers and administrator in academic and related activities for a holistic development of the higher educational institution <clears throat> i think uh, punjab is not second to none punjab has got a traditional philanthropic activity and therefore uh, you your alumni will be having liberal support to you both for academic as well as infrastructure development in the campus uh, i think i'm sure about it and there may be in, in, because i my experience uh, doesn't say anything because i have not visited punjab so far punjab and haryana i came up to gujarat and rajasthan that's all and uh, i go to i'm waiting and uh, i make it some inspiration from punjab regarding the uh, philanthropic attitude for student support and alumni through alumni an active alumni association can contribute in academic matters 
student support as well as mobilization of resources through their own association and also they can facilitate to mobilize resources <coughs> from elsewhere for both financial and non financial the institution nurtures the alumni association and in turn uh, the uh, higher educational institution should also extend all support to flourish to nourish the higher, the, the alumni association to take forward its activity in the campus or the chapters to facilitate them to contribute significantly to the development of the institution through financial and non financial means friends i would like to uh, mention a classic example which comes to my mind now mirba team there is a college called uh, maharaja's college in ernakulam yes i think it is old college oh yaar fir bina name bolne sorry name bolne puchna ah ha sir i am not able to follow could you please louder there is some interruption carry on, carry on please no sir sorry okay, sir okay. okay fine fine i think i i had a very very pleasant experience in uh, maharaja's college ernakulam kerala where ma for my surprise top 10 uh, kerala actors and actors artist they come from inkudi mammootty uh, the famous actor mammootty he come from that college and liberally they are supporting the classrooms and above all they are facilitating the students to come in the come and join in the film industry therefore uh, from my perception from my understanding there are good alumni which do excellent job in building and taking forward the higher educational institutions through newer heights and uh, 5.4.1 uh, is a qualitative matrix which has Uh, a registered and actively functional alumni association or chapters that the contributes liberally and significantly to the development of the institution through financial and uh, other support mechanisms which has five points this need to be in a descriptive form which uh, as i insist in the words of professor cholke should not exceed 500 words in strict and uh, having said this let me move on to 5.4.2 the <coughs> alumni contribution can be graded in five scale uh, we have like b between 5 lakhs Support, uh, financial support, monetary support extended. You can award more, and the data required include for five years, which has alumni association name of the alumni, quantum of the contribution in sum, and also the audited statement of account of the institution reflecting the receipts and expenditure. <clears throat> This is very important. The document will be. look at it now this is what <coughs> the job given to me i completed on the uh, dimension of <coughs> student support and progression i think i have covered uh, all the uh, as madam was telling four components student support mm -hmm. student progression mm -hmm. student participation and activities and finally alumni engagement having said that i we have still 30 minutes time another 15 minutes to uh, highlight which are the papers which are the files which are the documents you require for supporting to gain maximum point from the uh, uh, student support and progression criteria and also these files these documents may be useful for other criteria as well and uh, friends remember since i have some experience in preparing ssr and also the visiting institutions i have taken the information from section wise which are the sections you can collect the information on or keep the files and documents relevant, relevant documents for the student support and progression so like go ahead uh, uh, professor ajay yes sir yes sir definitely i, I want to, i want to i want to go little beyond the, then the yes sir uh, suggestion you had given yes sir yes sir please yes sir okay. please carry on carry on yeah right yeah right let me let me show it 
and you can have a look at it and uh, the documents uh, required for uh, criterion 5 please remember i insist and i repeat i emphasize again and again you don't miss even a bit of information. police police officers they look for answers even a small in uh, evidence like hair will be a turning point in the investigation in the assessment and the preparing ssr you don't leave any information please have as much as information very exhaustive information so that the uh, uh, the peer team will be more impressive and the assessment will be scientific and uh, comprehensive the applications sold program program wise during the last five years this is required because it clearly will show the student sorry the demand ratio both the first and the second five applications sold and also the students admitted program wise which will show clearly the demand ratio and the third point list of students from other states and countries respectively for five years some colleges and universities i know do have students from other states and countries you can include them <coughs> here under students and in, uh, you can make another file on that list of mphil phd scholars and by program wise for the past five years and the fellowships uh, obtained by research scholars from various institutions like icssr ichr iccr science and technology ministry of science and technology ugc and also <coughs> the independent uh, institutions like ratan tata etc welcome trust etc and the seventh aspect from academic section is list of students permitted to visit abroad by program like visiting exchange pdf etc postdoctoral fellowships visiting and exchange on fellowships to abroad and then more importantly please remember the feedback forms obtained by students and action taken on the feedback action taken report they form a separate file or document which may be available from the academic section of the university or institute i have limited knowledge about college i think and keep simply in the IQ, uh, IQAC uh, wing. From the examinations section, you can have some information like result analysis. Result analysis I made, I think this comes in the uh, curricular aspects as well. Here also you can make and uh, keep the record like comparing your institution's result output with the neighborhood, college or your affiliate university. Suppose if the uh, if a college is affiliated to Bombay University or Madras University, you can compare the result with the, with the affiliating university overall uh, result analysis. You can keep it. You can keep it how far it has done, it has come out well and uh, as a separate file in the examination section. They can show it to the visiting members. Number of malpractices uh, uh, for uh, over enthusiasm. Please don't keep the record if the malpractices are many. If the malpractices are less, it is better. Don't keep, if the malpractices are something like hundreds and thousands, don't keep them. Therefore, you see that the number of malpractices are also kept there. Exam related complaints addressed and then the redressal made. What is the time uh, between the complaints registered and then the redressal made? Such documents should be kept, in, kept in as a file. List of students awarded MPhil and the PhD programs during the reference period of five years and uh, the, the, the uh, such files may be available from the uh, examination section the next one is reservation cell i think each university each institute i think uh, bigger colleges are having reservation cell like obc scst and uh, uh, things like uh, the uh, physically challenged etc list of scholarship details there may be number of scholarships you can have the file for that list of research scholars availing OBC SCST financial assistance. It could be form of fellowship. It could be in the form of scholarship. It could be in the form of some assistance you can have. Even it could be from development organizations like, uh, as I said, Rattan Tata or Welcome Trust. Maybe some uh, such institutions, such organizations also may be having scholarship for uh, uh, OBC and SCST students. And then list of single girls child scholarship 
this is being given by ugc and also the national testing uh, service agency so they also have and then list of research fellowships what are the research fellowships you have you may be having number of fellowships for science arts management education engineering etc and all the fellowships should be listed out and they have uh, friends at this point i would like to emphasize here not just merely for number of uh, fellowships you can have but also notable agencies notable agencies you can have something like uh, international fellowships like idc like idc like ilo fellowship like world bank fellowship such fellowships like full full bright fellowship ford foundation fellowship if you have that the, the your 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 accomplishment you go up and the uh, authorities will be thinking of awarding more grant and you and we learn this is common in many of the institutions nowadays and please remember all these records should be authentic and appropriate and then from the ncc nss and also cs community social services wing we have list of meritorious student members certificate holders be certificate engaged in innovative activities in the campus most of the nss units go for campus annual camp annual camps but what is the innovative activity they do there i remember one of the colleges catching says catching snake in from family this no extra village has number of snakes number of poisonous snakes these students they taught the local youths how to catch snakes snakes with the snakes without harming the snakes as well as getting bitten by these snakes therefore this 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 can be called as innovative activity so therefore the assessors will be looking for innovative activities that has been carried out that has been carried out in the campus in the campus uh, and also in the camps in the uh, nss and the ncc camps what are they if they are there you can list out and you can bring out in the form of file and document and the other one is details of participation in disaster crisis and crowd management sometimes our volunteers are engaged in disaster crisis and crowd management in notable places like your gurudwara students volunteers may be there to maintain the crowd etc because we indians uh, you know how we are uh, abiding by rules etc therefore crowd management is one of the important aspects in religious places and the participation of students or the volunteers may be kept as separate file you can, you can have even photographs participation in republic day parade etc can show as good record good information good source of document career guidance and placement to sell uh, you will be having the uh, salary component etc you can <laughs> and also the you can list out the notable companies the companies orders the companies communication or the mou etc can form as a document under career count guidance and placement and then training programs organized by the placement cell uh, where you have invited uh, the tata consultancy or uh, infosys etc such is uh, training can be uh, uh, shown as document to the authorities in addition to these the universities also conduct placement camps in various places within the campus and the outside such a document and the photos can be placed and then in addition to these student association activities there are students also sound students student activities association activities which do uh, carry out both academic as well as uh, the other activities in the campus which can be uh, uh, taken as uh, reliable source and document alumni association i highlighted already but uh, however you please remember details of registration register with details of meetings and resolutions and also the contributions made by the association uh, the particulars of star alumni as i commented you may be having some star alumni from your college whether from social life or politicians or cine field even in academics uh, i think in our state we we call them as 
responsible alumni and we also award some awards annually in each university so that way you can encourage and uh, make the alumni association more sound and more active and then support the uh, training given to the students guidance directed by the alumni association placement made from the alumni association to stakeholder that is the student community at large i think all these form very important document for uh, displaying in the college during visit and then role of the iqac as you all know it is very important because this is spinal cord of the system and uh, it has the role of uh, role as advisor facilitator planner compiler of data and also the role player in the process of accreditation of higher educational institution therefore iqac is everything iqac is everything from scratch to gold therefore iqac uh, has a many role but uh, remember iqac members should be supported by other faculty members and administration uh, in a very uh, pleasant manner in a cordial manner in a fruitful in the purposeful manner so that they can take forward the assessment and accreditation process without any hassle therefore uh, this many documents you please keep in your mind and uh, in addition to these i would like to give uh, a couple of general suggestion uh, because uh, you have to say, you have to sensitize entire campus uh, what i mean entire campus is starting from sand sand and stone of our institution uh, that much importance you should give and uh, everybody should know what is nac why they are coming what is the role of each and every stakeholder of the campus students teaching non teaching parents alumni etc and also the officials who are associated with the college which is the university which is the institution therefore the sensitization is very important before you prepare ssr after submitting ssr before visiting spirit team and uh, you can have number of meetings either collectively or individually to each group and sensitize them this is a general point i want to make and i want to emphasize with regard to students please remember some of the students are poor in english communication and the nac will randomly pick up only 10% of the students who have uh, responded with the phone numbers email ids for interactive session with the pt members uh, sorry with the data verification Uh, and the validation <laughs> therefore therefore you see that the students list which you are supplying to the most of the students are having language most of the students are good at communicative skill in english uh, and also you should you should sensitize the students the nac will randomly ask students to give their responses on all the dimensions of seven criteria and in their own way and therefore you should sensitize you should educate you should motivate you should ignite the students to be prepared to respond positively about your college and uh, they will be having uh, some other idea and uh, you should orient them and it is the responsibility of iqac and the authorities to do that and also sensitize alumni and the parents uh, because this will be of helpful to uh, helpful for the uh, management to uh, arrange the hassle free alumni meet parents meet with the peer team visit during the uh, assessment uh, this is what i want to share some of my uh, random thoughts with you and i wish all of you to have splendid student progression and also support for ultimately getting higher grade i wish you all the best thank you and thank you very much for the opportunity given to share some of my thoughts in the nice morning today thank you all and i thank specifically dr suresh and dr pathaniya thank you all if there are some queries and we can uh, discuss and uh, clarify thank you very much sir uh, i am grateful to uh, for the amazing and very informative presentation we all greatly appreciate it uh, it was uh, nothing short of incredible informative and interesting Uh, sir i am struggling to find out the right words to express my gratitude to you please accept our heartiest 
congratulations and sincerest thanks for delivering to us such a remarkable outstanding knowledgeable and informative lecture i hope and rather i am sure that all the participants uh, got benefited from your enlightened very informative and very elaborative deliberation sir we always look forward to have a uh, uh, more interaction in future in this course also so once again thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you namaste 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 is there any interactive session now yes sir yes sir definitely uh, yeah please after, after very elaborative and informative deliberation by professor s rajendran ji now the session is open for question answers so my dear participants please ji, ji. Uh, feel free to ask questions over to you participants ajit sir ajit sir i am having one question sir may yes, i yes ma'am please ask a uh, very interactive and uh, sorry very informative session sir sir my question is in regard to 5.2.1 matrix sir actually sir i am working in a law college and what happens actually is our student when they pass out now they happens to go to court because they are not getting good jobs after doing llb or bllb so sir can we mention this particular thing ki if they get uh, them uh, you know uh, from the c they are placed under that particular advocate on on his or her letter head so can we mention this particular point under placement sir ki they are placed under such and such advocate no play the place sir no no uh, yes, sir, can please. i respond can i respond now yes sir please yes sir yeah this is not a placement as such but some kind yes. of support they are getting some kind of assistance they are getting this is not because they are practicing under senior guys senior uh, uh, lawyer therefore it is not like uh, salary drawn uh, you are not uh, seniors some kind of uh, what you call consultation fee or whatever you call them but it is not just a salary component when the salary component comes then we can claim it as employment otherwise it can be called as employment so then we have we can mention this benefit which we are getting that i mean can, this, uh, this particular can, thing so yeah, yeah, you can, can mention you can mention you can mention you see of something like 50 graduates we are they are passing out every year there are some 25% or 30% register for practicing and the remaining 20% are joining in private sector something like you whatever the fact you can mention that that can be given but uh, i i as i understand there are great number of demand for lawyers especially in the competitive world now where the litigation is emerging on a large scale therefore the legal counselors are required in corporate bodies including our ambadis and uh, tata etc there are good amount of uh, demand from the uh, uh, multinational companies not only indian companies but also elsewhere uh, i think uh, uh, the law graduates can think of joining and uh, think of looking for probing it and uh, most of the times what they prefer they want to settle down in their in their tehsil itself or in their district itself and the practice because of various reasons domestic reason and the relatives etc uh, i think they can go little beyond and they can think of joining in uh, uh, multinational companies i am just giving a, out of my box i am ta- talking about uh, there are tremendous scope for them to join but with regard to registering here for assessment they can just uh, uh, you can just point out that this per- this much percentage of lawyers lawyers are entering in the practice of uh, legal counseling under senior advocates that you can mention that is the point uh, i would like to make so one more thing sir so yeah, many please. of our students they are going for judiciary so there is a two clear i mean pre or mains but when they you know they cannot clear the interview so can we mention this particular point that they have cleared the pre or the mains in 5.2.3 matrix that yeah, is they have cleared me- yeah very okay. good point very good point you can mention but what is the remedial measure you have taken to overcome the difficulty in facing the interview that you have to highlight again that is a point i would like to emphasize okay there are some difficulty like communication language community language problem will be there some psychological problem will be there when they are when they are clearing the right written examinations there may be some problem in facing the interview what is that the college is initiating what is that the alumni association is initiating to 
overcome such a difficulty if it is given then it will be your law graduate employment also will go up you can claim to two fold benefit sir in ssr also and dbp also both we can in both the things we can mention ki so much students have cleared the pre and means in both the yes, things yes, sir, we can mention yeah yeah you can mention you can mention you can mention okay sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you all the best all the best thank you sir anyone <laughs> else want to ask question mr stephy khurana ma'am stephy khurana if you want to ask question please ask neither the question is not even they can say they can submit they can comment my good please. afternoon sir yes yes ma'am please i am punita yeah, from uh, sir i am sir i am punita assistant professor from bajaj college sir i want to ask uh, you mentioned student association activities yes sir yeah. student association activities yeah under under placement and career guidance yeah. uh, sir can you give some examples what kind of activities will come under this head see the students activities range in fold you see there may be some kind of economic in, in economics we have economic forum which is maintained by students economic forum here itself we have research okay. council forum they they is also maintained by maintained by students in some other institutions we have different forums like cultural forum so each forum has its own role to play in the domain of knowledge and if the star activity which is going on either at the regional level national level or international level that can be documented and shown in the respective place this is what i meant student association okay sir thank you thank you thank you thank you sir uh, anybody anybody want to ask question dr shali ma'am please if you have a question please ask yes sir yes yes sir thank you sir. thank you dr ajay first of all uh, i want to compliment today's resource person for such a collaborative and i open the session thank you so much sir for that uh, i am dr ali assistant professor from the host college only sir i want to ask two three things number one uh, you were talking about sam please uh, tell something about it in detail which one uh, which one sam sam you were talking about sam sam so, i don't remember sam okay uh, sir secondly you were talking about word scholarship so we are a teacher education institute can our students uh, claim for those kind of scholarships word scholarships or something or those are just for science colleges or science institutes or iits only i am not following you were what is that sam i said can you just recollect earlier one and then other scholarship international scholarship you said you know yes sir uh, word scholarships i am talking and i am talking about sam when you were talking about this scholarships only then only you use this term welcome so I, i remember I, i i was mentioning about welcome trust welcome trust okay maybe then i yeah, this uh, is an international body located in uk which do okay. which do extend the fellowship for the life sciences especially okay. the medical field okay biological sciences you know they can avail even in different people are in india put by mm. welcome trust उत्तरप्रदेश <laughs> we got a special assistance of 10 crores from the ministry of hrd mhrd okay, okay. mhrd to have a special uh, special uh, uh, what what you call special scheme and okay. uh, we we have started integrated program something like four years or four and a half years okay uh, bsc ed bs bsc ed like 
like you, you have the regional institute of education in mysore you know yes in tune with that we have started the uh, integrated program which is okay. a special assistance by the mhrd 10 okay. 10 crores was given by mhrd through ugc very so, nice so you, you i think uh, education teacher education institution has tremendous potential even in my earlier in university uh, salem periyar university salem where i was mm-hmm. working for 10 years even okay. that economic that education department is also doing well they also got some assistance i remember they started mbed process sorry ma in education they had only mbed ba mbed english program so sir, so it is uh, yes thank you so much sir uh, very yeah. encouraging uh, uh, i request you if you get anything about it please kindly assist us in future also yeah sure sure yeah sure, sure. <laughs> thank sure. you sir the uh, i just said may i uh, ask one more please yes yeah, sir please. yes ma'am yes ma'am Uh, sir uh, i uh, heard uh, from many of the, uh, on many of the platforms about an autonomous colleges these days do they have some kind of special grants they receive from the central the, government for for uh, uh, autonomous, autonomous colleges college. madam there are colleges with the potential for excellence please remember <laughs> normally potential for excellence is given to only universities in okay. tamil nadu in tamil nadu we have notable colleges like mcc madras krishna college in chennai st joseph's college in trichy they are all awarded potential with the excellence potential for excellence that stage they have got not special assistance they have got a separate identity which is equal to university please remember this <laughs> okay sir thank you so much sir thank you it's nice session thank you so much thank you ajay sir thank you sir thank dr satpal kaur ma'am please ask your question yeah and um, good afternoon to everyone well uh, myself is dr satpal kaur associate professor in shit kanshiram college of physical education bhaku majra kharad sir it was a wonderful and an enlightening session but uh, i just want to uh, little uh, i was just want to know little about uh, the student support survey Student support sur- sur- survey. About this, it is not called a student support survey. <laughs> Actually, in the SSR, there is a provision for student support survey is there. Yeah. But in the student support, what I am talking about is student support and the progression. There, the student survey is there. Yes. What we call SSR or SSR or something is there. There is a component for that. That That's they directly about that now. Yeah, yeah. The yes, the the validating agency, the NAC has given to the private agency, or I don't know, they use the word private, but it's given to a separate agency. Okay. They will directly contact the respective students, which you listed them and which you listed and submitted to the NAC. They in turn they will contact the students okay. and get to know the details whether okay. hostel facility is there. Okay. If it is there, is it in order? Okay. If the students says yes, it is there, it is in order. then they will take consider it as positive so okay. that responses will be given to the pt visit to pt members okay. when they are visiting that will be given so accordingly the investigations will be made okay so the responses will be there the responses whether the student was very uh, uh, positive about your institution some students may think that's the right thing that is different that is why told in the end you should you should sensitize all your students all your teachers all your non teaching staff to a core so that they will be having more knowledge about the activities going on and also how to react how to respond how to interact with the uh, pit team visit this is a point i would like to emphasize so certainly the survey is there and uh, since the student centric i remember on the other day professor sochol ke was also suresh sochol ke was also emphasizing Okay. now the uh, the assessment is centering around uh, uh, different dimensions particularly on student centric you take any dimension of seven criteria ultimately they touch upon here and there okay. you one form or the other either directly or indirectly either forward or backward the students uh, dimension will be there that is why when i said the list of documents you should collect from administrative section academic section and also examination section not just a student welfare we have in kandigram we have student welfare all the information will be available but in spite you have to collect the information from different wings of your uh, institution therefore the students should be thoroughly 
sensitized please remember motivated ignited cleared their doubts thoroughly you hope you can have maximum number of meetings even before you intend to for ssr before you intend to for assessment please convene the meeting you demonstrate you discuss you interact then only we will be having our swak what is the strength with us what is the weakness with us what are the opportunities how the challenges can be met out etc so this has to come from the different stakeholders including students thank you <coughs> yes sir thank you thank you so much sir yes sir thank you so much good afternoon sir very good very good sir, afternoon i have a sir i have a query yeah please in matrix in matrix 5.1.1 under student support there is a, a one thing added new capability building and skill enhancement initiative undertaken by institution uh, under this e content development is added on the part of students which type of e content development is expected by next sir 5.1.3 no sir hmm. 5.1.1 for teacher education institution 5.1.1 yes sir only table i have 5.1.1 uh, sir uh, sir i think you have a, a general uh, general uh, matrix uh, will you watch you have separate uh, matrix for yes uh, yes okay Here. okay okay fine 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 but uh, uh, can you just repeat the question madam yes sir I try to answer yeah please yes sir <coughs> it is mentioned that what what, what is the kind of sorry uh, capability building and skill enhancement initiative capacity building capacity building not capability building Anji. capacity building haan ji okay 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 yeah i understand i understand the capacity sir, uh, building is, uh, in the manual it is mentioned capability so i was okay, okay yes. maybe the yeah, capability yeah. building and skill enhancement initiative undertaken by institution here we the, have madam we uh, even in my presentation it is there in 5.1.3 it is there i will try to show it sir <laughs> i am having 5.1.1 uh, uh, okay, okay anyway. sir, it is mentioned that there should be e content development i think madam it, it is there it is there you can see it yes you see in my slide it is there Okay, capacity sir. building and skill enhancement initiatives taken by the institution include the following yes. just 10 to 10 points where i have listed out eight points like competitive examinations it's clear yes career counseling is clear yes soft sir. skills is clear yes sir remedial coaching is clear language yes. and communication skills it's clear mm -hmm. bridge courses life yes, skills yoga physical fitness health and hygiene personal counseling Yes, I sir. think in the personal counseling, I little elaborated with the Gandhi Gram model because it's unique. And uh, I think here we, I don't have unique content, but perhaps what you are having, maybe for. Uh, sir, it is in, latest. Uh, latest. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We are all old, you know. Uh, which is all... recently changed in few. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. There is a possibility. Few, there is few a possibility. Months, See, whatever I I present, even I clarified with Dr. Suresh on some issues. The the yes, the, the, the 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 components are kept changing quite often. Yes. it is left to the uh, nac to do that what e content what they mean is uh, yes, in the capacity in the capability building you are talking about capability building but it is cap capacity building okay. the e content i mean the notes the references which are useful for the students in the classroom learning can be prepared students themselves by browsing in the net in the internet in the okay. online mode that is what yes. e content they mean i suppose i am not very clear about it i presume <laughs> one more thing is added in this that online assessment of learning sir suggest some guidelines for online assessment of learning online assessment a very very city in the it is also mentioned in this criteria only sir teach okay. for it is for teacher education institutions particular online assessment mode mode means actually now because of the the pandemic lockdown and the pandemic problem all over the world i think in the world we have advanced programs and techniques etc available and now we started doing it in tamil nadu it is going on now the okay. online examination is going on online examination is going on only one university is going for blended examination and our university comes under central government therefore we are going for blended mode online and off offline mode 
okay, and uh, online evaluation uh, what i mean is uh, there are two components one online evaluation what do they mean from the student perspective is online they will communicate to the respective students to clarify certain aspects as i said for the earlier question okay. like whether the infrastructure is good in your campus or not for which the students should respond online okay, am i clear yes the sir second, yes sir the second point is the teacher has to evaluate online on the question on the answers written by the students that that, that has also come to uh, practice in large scale particularly after the pandemic therefore this is being in practice now the online evaluation method by the teachers i'm talking about the teachers even in our in our campus i remember for the second year students we conducted the uh, continuous formative formation assessment cfa online this year but uh, the, it was there was a criticism about that and the students may copy the answers etc but even then even then even for copying also they need to have some skill if they cannot just like copy on the question which you sent with this, uh, some raw material therefore yes, online online uh, online mode has come to practice india especially at this hour in a large scale i don't know about punjab but it has come to practice it is very much here also sir ah uh, yeah we have to yes. go for it now yes uh, and of course you uh, the middle age teachers are okay but uh, teachers at advanced age like us we find it extremely difficult to get with the computer <laughs> today i depended entirely on my student for a phd scholar for uh, rolling down the ppt so uh, automatically it will be there it will be there okay, thank you sir we, thank you very much we can, we can uh, get it done thank you thank you anybody else hello good afternoon sir yes hello good afternoon sir yeah please please Uh, i have a query sir uh, so some special philanthropists donate money to educational institute if that institute uses that donated money for helping out needy students then how smooth will be the legalities for documentation now you can say what will, the, what will be the effect of fee structure of various educational courses when we open our gates for foreign universities no 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 you can see madam if your institution is willing to sponsor a student whether it is whether he comes from scst or backward or women or physically challenged whatever the class you call it can be documented no doubt about it that is what i told in my presentation the institutions own resources can also be utilized special as special assistance for uplifting the needy students that is quite possible it is there it can be legally shown there are some institutions which motivate it. they pay with the fees they pay with the fees they they may not directly give the money they pay with the fees tuition fees etc sir you have to pay some checkering document for the uses of that donated money yeah you can do that so i'm saying you can do okay. your if your management has donated a few thousands of rupees or few lakhs of rupees or few crores of rupees that can be given to the students in the form of assistance and it can be legally shown in the uh, document it can be shown <coughs> but because they will be claiming that it has been spent for students welfare it has been spent for the students upliftment so that provision is there all right sir thank you sir thank you so much okay anybody else sir so could you yes sir so could you please elaborate the difference between free ships and scholarship what does a free ship means ah okay a free ship just now i said you know fee waiver ship fee waiver ship okay. when you pay the fee right, it becomes a free ship <laughs> it, it becomes a free okay. ship that's all. fine fine okay. and some colleges may waive fine. the some colleges may waive the tuition they sorry the bus fees it becomes free fees okay even sir our institution do but we don't know actually this thing is going to be come in this particular point so we can take benefit now yeah, yeah, thank meaning, you sir meaning. thank you madam that is why i said bit and piece information don't miss you keep everything okay. let the peer team decides whether it is relevant or less relevant i don't say irrelevant i say less relevant <laughs> okay sir thank you sir. thank you thank you thank you thank you ma'am uh, anybody else
आई थिंक सब कुछ आर रेडी फर्स्ट एनीबॉडी हैज फ्रॉम द मोस्ट ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ आर वेटिंग फॉर हैविंग खाना आई थिंक यू नो फूड sir i think uh, there is no more question from the thank audience uh, so thank you very much thank sir you, you. Uh, you answered all the questions uh, of the participants in a very elaborate manner and i am sure all the participants got satisfactory answer to their questions uh, it's uh, really good to see that uh, all the participants uh, comes up with lots of queries and make this session very fruitful interesting and attractive so i must congr congratulate to all of you i hope uh, you will participate in uh, actively uh, in coming session of this workshop also so thanks one and all uh, after very interactive and particip uh, participatory uh, question answer session uh, now uh, i request dr sarabjit kaur assistant professor ghg harprakash college of education for women sadma kuludhana to present summary of the day and vote of thanks uh, ma'am please thank you sir a very good afternoon and warm welcome in the concluding session of today's workshop on criteria 5 student support and progression this may be the end of today's workshop but undoubtedly this is a new beginning on behalf of ghg har prakash college of education sidma kurd i extend i take this opportunity to conclude the sixth session of the workshop and propose vote of thanks to all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to the success of this session first of all i would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to our worthy resource person professor s rajendran sir for his deliberation on student support and progression sir you in a very comprehensive manner touched each and every aspect of all indicators comprising criteria 5 that are student support student progression student participation in activities and alumni engagement sir has emphasized on adopting student welfare measures and encouraging alumni participation for yielding quality results sir in his presentation clearly explained that along with teaching institutions must take care of students progression and must bring quality changes in teaching learning process as per the trend of progression of students sir you surely enriched our understanding about various issues and technicalities under this area sir we gained tremendously from this session now we have greater clarity of this criteria sir your vast knowledge and experience reflects in your handling of question answer session and clarifying our doubts we ensure you sir that whatever practices of student support and progression we learned in this session will be definitely will be definitely implemented in our institutions i am sure that all participants have taken note of your practical suggestions and these will surely helpful for the preparation for next visit and raising quality continuum of our institutions events of this dimension can't happen overnight it needs meticulous planning and execution and an eye for detail it was the dedication and enthusiasm of our principal dr amandeep kaur for awakening the passion and desire to support as a leader and as a letter to reach the goal of success ma'am your constant encouragement has always helped us in the past week whole hearted participation and presence of our management member sardar pritam singh jol ji who added another feather to the glory of this workshop by his presence throughout the session sir your presence gives great strength and moral support to us sir we are extremely thankful for your ma'am voice is not audible please and repeat am i audible yes ma'am yes please carry on a uh, whole hearted participation and presence of our management member sardar pritam singh jol who added another feather to the glory of this workshop by his presence throughout the session sir your presence gives great strength and moral support to us 
we are extremely thankful for your enthusiastic support and motivation sir as no program can be successful without active and participative audience with utmost feeling of deep appreciation i extend my heartfelt thanks to all the dignitaries professor um, pachori professor uh, uh, shukla principals and staff members from different prestigious institutions for sparing their valuable time and making this event a success i appreciate the hard work and sincere efforts of dr ajay convener of this workshop for making all arrangements for smooth functioning of this workshop the special thanks to all my team members the organizing committee teaching and non teaching staff for their unflinching support and coordination thank you very much over to ajay sir <clears throat> <coughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Sarjit Kaur, ma'am, for presenting very elaborate and systematic summary of the day and vote of thanks. So, thanks one and all. Uh, I truly appreciate your gift of time and your patient hearing. Your presence really uh, making this workshop a grand success. Once again, thanks everyone. Uh, this is all for the day. Uh, we will meet tomorrow sharp at 11 o'clock. with full energy and same enthusiasm so see you tomorrow take care bye bye have a nice day now you can leave the meeting <laughs>